Hey there, so you probably came here to find how to do this effect quickly and easily, so I won't waste your guys' time, and I'll jump right into it. So, first, create a new project. Now that you're in DaVinci, head down to the bottom to the Edit tab, and import your footage by clicking Ctrl I, and then uh, go ahead and download the paint splatter uh, green screen that I've linked down in the description below. Uh, I also linked a MP4 converter, so convert it with that. And the same thing, import it using Ctrl I. Now drag in your gameplay. For me, I have two audio tracks, you should only have one, don't worry about that. And then drag in your green screen on top of that onto layer video 2. Select it, go into fusion. Should take a while, give it a sec. Click control space and look up ultra keyer. Click add. Then grab this little eyedropper, click and drag and drag it onto the green. And you should see that the green goes away completely. Now go and scroll through and see where the uh, splatter first starts. So right there. You can click on it and click this little marker to mark it on the timeline so you know where to where to put your character. For me, I want to freeze frame right here when it's still glowing. So what I want to do is I want to position the frame that I want to freeze uh, on that marker. Click B to get your blade tool. Cut it right there by clicking. And then zoom in. Click your right arrow key once. And cut it again where that little playhead is. Then zoom out, move the rest of your clip out of the way. I'm not going to be using it, so I'm just going to delete that. Um, and click on it. You can either right click, change clip speed, and click freeze frame. Or for me, personally what I do, because I'm using DaVinci 17, is I go into the inspector, go over to video, speed change, and I click this little, little snowflake button. Then you just want to grab that edge, zoom in a little bit. Grab that edge, click, and drag it out to the duration that you want. For me personally, I'm probably not going to use the, the whole green screen. So I'm probably going to cut it somewhere there. Again, blade tool, A to go back to your selection tool, and delete it. So now we have this. It, it's moving at the beginning. And then this comes in and your clip is frozen. Now what you want to do is mask out your character. Click on the clip, hit color. Make sure that you have not the green screen selected, but your clip selected right here. And go into this window panel and hit curve. This will bring up your curve menu. Right click in this view right here. Hit add alpha output and drag the blue square to the blue circle. Now you can zoom in. If you don't want this over here, you can go back to your edit tab and click disable video track to just disable it for now. So now that you're here, zoom in. And if you click, you add a point. If you click and drag, you add a point with a curve. And just keep doing this process until you've outlined your whole character. I'm going to speed this section up to not waste your guys' time. Now that you've got into your last point, just click on the, on the original point in the mask to finish it. And as you can see, now our character is um, separated from the rest of our, our clip. Now it's just our character. So 
Uh, you see that it's kind of rough and not very, very smooth. So to fix this, we go back into our color tab. And if you want, you can switch, switch off the power window to see better. And what I like to do is add a little bit of a softness, a little bit inside and a little bit outside. Since my character is glowing, it's a little bit easier to, um, you know, add an outside softness. But if your character didn't have a glow around them, you might have to tweak it a little bit more. So now we can head back to the edit tab and enable that video track again. And now we have our baseline to the effect on. What we can do is we can drag our character above that paint splatter and import our background. You have two options for a background. You can either download an image from the internet or you can make one custom with paint.net which I'll show you how to do right now. Now that you're in paint.net you click Control N to make a new file. Do 1920 by 1080 and you have a 1080p image. Here to move around you also click middle mouse button and drag. To zoom in you hold control and use a scroll wheel. So now pick out a color that you like uh, that will fit your character and your effect. For me I like this kind of beigey peach color. So you fill your background layer with that. Hit enter to finish that. Now go into effects, photo, and however you pronounce this effect. Uh, you won't see these these effects with the little uh, puzzle piece in them because I have installed plugins, but this should still still be there. Click it, and you see that it starts fading the edges to black. So what I like to do is decrease the density a little bit and increase the radius. Now you see that only the edges are outlined. Hit OK, and then Control Shift S to save it as a PNG. I already pre-made one, so I'm gonna be using that one. So now that you have your background imported, drag it down under everything and clip it. And now we see that we have our background, we have our character, and we have the paint splatter. What we're missing is animation and text. Right now, we're going to focus on text. So go into Effects Library, Titles, and Text. Drag it in, and drag it uh, probably under your character. So, character on video 4, text on video 3, your green screen on video 2, and your background and your original clip on video 1. Now cut the text to the duration of the clip, and... For text settings, set it to um, impact, give it a little bit of a stroke, so three or four is good. Increase the size and position it to wherever you want. You can also change the color up here. I'm going to turn it, I'm going to change it to a little bit of a an orangish. There we go, that's good enough. Now change it to say, for example, in my case, Hammer Titan. And then copy that, go over to the beginning, hit Control C, drag up your clip, drag up your text, and hit Control V. And I'm gonna set this to join the battle. Make sure it's all caps. And drag it down. In order to change position, you can just click and drag on these position X and Y coordinates. And now we have our character, our text, our splatter. We have everything but the animation done. So now we're going to start on the animation. Uh, we're going to have to make a compound clip out of our two texts to adjust position uh, so they change position together. So click on the top one, uh, hold control, click on the bottom one, right click and hit new compound clip. 
And now if you change the zoom on the compound clip, both texts change size. Now we're going to start on animation. So what I like to do is I like to add an effect that fades between uh, the original clip and the freeze frame a little bit better. Because right now it's not very smooth, it just cuts in. So what I like to do is I like to select all of our clips except for that one, drag them up a layer, and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's hitting your right arrow key 10 times and drag it forward. And now we're going to go 10 frames back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And hit B for blade tool and cut it right there. Then we're going to our fixed library, filters, scroll down until you find dent and drag it onto your clip. Then select it, go into effects, dent type, type 2, size, drag it all the way up to 1, and then hit that little diamond at the very beginning of it, and set it to 0 0.35. Then go all the way to the end, hit it, and set it to something like 0.42. And now you see that there's a little bit of a bulge when it fades in. If you want, I'm probably actually going to increase that value a little bit more. There we go. There's a little bit of bulge right before it transitions into our effect. Now what we want to do is we want to select our uh, character and hit this top keyframe right here. Zoom him up to something like 1.3, actually 1.1.7. And then go forward until this splatter stops moving. So right here. Then hit that keyframe again, zoom him in, position him a little bit up and left, and then go to the end of the clip. Hit that diamond again, and position him up and left a little bit, maybe even increase the zoom. Now playback's a little laggy, so you can go up to playback, timeline proxy, and set it to half resolution to make it a little smoother. Now we have our character moving across the screen. Uh, I'm actually going to tweak this a little, maybe change the position a little bit. You can always swap keyframes by clicking these arrows right here and it snaps to the next set of keyframes. Yeah, I like it. I like the way it looks. Now we're going to do the same thing for the text. Go to the beginning, zoom it in, then go when the splatter stops moving, which is right about here. Hit your keyframe button again, and zoom it down, and position it to wherever you want, and then go to the end of the clip, hit that again, and position it to wherever you want. I might even decrease the zoom on this one. That's a little bit too much movement for my liking, so that's better. Now we have our main effect done. We have our bulge fade in, and we have our animation done. If you're happy with the effect here, you can keep it like this. But what I like to do is I like to import some anime lines, which I also linked in the description below. And I like to drag them above everything, cut them, and go over to fusion. Hit control space again and select delta key, click add, and set your reference to the black, so the bottom one. Don't have to worry about the top. And now we have our anime lines above everything. What I like to do is scroll down to composite and drag down the opacity so they're a little less visible. And that's basically it. Um, Thanks so much for watching, and here is the finished product.